Now, from here, you have rho. If I multiply by rho, rho itself is, can be thought as total density, I mean total concentration of the mixture, or can be thought of as the density of the mixture. Density means mass of the mixture divided by volume of the mixture. Okay? So mass of the mixture and total mass of the mixture, indeed they are the same. They cancel out. So you will have summation of mole of each species multiplied by partial molar enthalpy divided by volume. Mole per volume is molar concentration, right? So this is supposed to give you molar concentration of I times H bar I. So therefore, E is supposed to be equal to minus K del T plus now we have two terms. Both of them are in sigma sign. Both of them supposed to have H bar. So I'm going to take H bar out. Summation of H bar. Inside, you have Ji plus Ci times V. Right? This term still needs to be multiplied by V. Okay? Now regarding this term, by definition, capital Ji is equal to Ci Vi minus V. Velocity of species I relative to mixture velocity. This mixture velocity is mass average. This is Ji. Added by Civ, this term. So Civ, Civ here and Civ there cancel out. As a result, you get Ci Vi, right? Because this term and this term cancel out. This term come from here, there. All right? And what is Ci Vi? Remember, I told you once before we have CIVI, CIV, CV. CIVI here is a combined flux of species I. Okay? So this would equal to capital NI. Remember, this is capital NI. This is convective flux of species I. This is summation of Ni. This is convective flux. Okay? So at the end, we can write down combined energy flux in the system where we have more than one species to be this equation.
Any question? So then we can use this um, combined energy flux in the equation of energy or shear balance for energy so that we can find the temperature profile later. Okay? But again, this equation still have partial molar entropy, which is needed to be converted into enthalpy of pure specii, okay? Somehow you need to convert this. And enthalpy itself is not convenient. You will also need to convert enthalpy to function of temperature. How? Enthalpy is integral CP dt, okay? All right, I'd like to give you an example. In this example, you have a wall, a cold surface, which has low temperature, okay? Outside here, you have gas B mixed with vapor of A. A is, it, a is vapor, that means vapor is condensable. Gas is non-condensable. Just like if you have moisture in air, okay? When you have humid air, everything combined here, you get humid air. Air with some certain level of humidity, okay? If the humid air is in contact with cold surface, what would happen? Moisture in air will be condensed, forming a thin film of water. Just like you, when you have a glass of cold water, outside the glass, you have water condensed around it, right? Condensation takes place because humidity in air is in contact with cold surface, and then condensation takes place, forming a thin film here, the red line, Red highlight here is liquid of A. Condense it out. Let me ask you this. In this particular problem, do you have do you think that we have energy transport? Do we have energy transport? Yes. Do we have momentum transport? It depends. If you say that the system is vapor phase, in the vapor phase, there is no momentum transport, okay? Do we have mass transport? 
is there any diffusion? If there is diffusion, it means that in the system here, there are two points at least in the system whereas concentration are different, right? Can you identify two points in the system where the concentration are different? Along this direction, right? Now, if I say that this is y direction, here is y equal to zero, this is y equal to delta, and delta here is the thickness of film resistance. As I said earlier, when we talk about Newton law of cooling, do you remember Newton law of cooling? Newton law of cooling says that, of course, we have the heat transport, and therefore temperature profile is no longer linear. Okay, if temperature profile is no longer linear. Newton law of cooling would simplify the, the problem by dividing system into two parts. In the first part, where temperatures change, it is assumed that temperature change linearly, and then outside that, temperature remains constant. So we divide them into two parts, the film resistant part and bulk part, okay? We can do the same thing for mass transport. In this case, concentration of A varies along Y direction. Out here, where it's so far away from the cold surface, concentration of A in vapor is supposed to remain roughly constant. So if you draw the concentration profile, it will be constant around here and then drop, right? Does it drop or does it go up? Doesn't matter, it's change. Out here is constant, it's called bulk. In here there is a change, it's called film resistance. All right? Now, question is, do you think concentration of A at delta, whether it is greater or smaller than concentration of Y equal to zero? Which, where is higher in concentration? Many people would say that concentration here is supposed to be higher because it is in contact with liquid. But it's wrong. Why is wrong? Because the liquid itself comes from vapor condensed out. So you have one certain level of humidity in air that level of humidity would be condensed into liquid. That means the air itself has lower in, con in humidity, right? It brings water from vapor phase to liquid phase. Humidity in vapor phase would be reduced. Therefore, water can form here. So concentration would drop like this, okay? 